The GoPro Hero 11 is so sick. It comes preset up with an easy mode, which allows you to capture pretty good footage straight out of the box. But if you want to capture the absolute highest quality footage you can, then we need to enable pro controls. Here you can set up your own film modes and settings. This is a tedious and boring part to owning a sick camera, but it's got to be done. Luckily for you guys, I made a cheat sheet that you can check out in the video description below, which I think gives you the best possible settings for filming kayaking with your GoPro. Standouts include 4K 120 Super View, 5K 60, and full frame with a 916 crop for vertical social media platforms. Okay, let's talk about filming with the GoPro Hero 11. I hate on pod footage because I see so much of it, but there are times where it does truly look sick and it is a nice easy way to capture moments throughout the day and I do think that watching my GoPro footage back from a session made me a better kayaker because I could see all the things I wanted to change in those video clips and work on them. The problem is, is that I'm completely underwater and the kayak works best when it's on top of the water and it's also way easier to see where you're going when you're not underwater. I use two different modes to capture my pod footage. I use slow motion when I'm dropping off waterfalls or into really big chaotic rapids and I want to extend those moments of freefall and or chaos and I find the 4K 120 Superview mode does an amazing job of capturing these moments but there are times where I don't need all of those 120 frames and I'm actually trying to get a little bit of motion blur and to show the speed of the line that I'm hitting and for those shots I really like the 5K 30 frame Superview mode, I think it looks really really good. Superview is an absolute game changer for pod footage because it gives you such a wide angle and you can actually get some perspective and tell what's going on around the kayak. To get a good angle with your GoPro, stick one of the mounts to the middle of your helmet, clip your GoPro in and then tilt your GoPro down until you see the top of your helmet sticking into the bottom of the shot. From here, just back that angle off a little bit and right there I find it gives you the best perspective when you're out kayaking. When you're filming around water, the number one thing is to lick the GoPro and splash it with water, just as you would do to stop a diving mask from fogging up. This stops the water droplets hitting the lens from sticking and ruining your shot. The new GoPros come with Hyperview, which gives you an even wider angle shot, but I was finding when I was testing it out that I was getting some distortion from the kayak, and so I switched pretty quickly back to Superview, and I think that after all these years of filming Superview kayaking shots, that my eyes are just used to the way that that looks, and so I'm sticking with Superview, even though Hyperview is available. I don't use the stabilization feature when I'm filming with a GoPro on my head, purely because I think that the water underneath my kayak does a pretty good job of dampening all those little vibrations and shakes out, and when I do hit a big line, it is bumpy and it is chaotic and I like the GoPro footage to reflect that, like I'm not looking for it to look smooth, I'm looking for it to convey to you what I'm seeing and what's, what, what it feels like to be me down those waterfalls or down those rapids and so I think having that shake and wobble as you drop into big moves gives you a more immersive video when people are watching it back. But for filming other things, the stabilization feature is absolutely incredible. Whether that's taking out the small shake when you're filming handheld shots, or you're running around and literally bouncing around with the camera as you try and capture some, some sort of shot. 
The stabilization feature in the GoPro for this sort of shot makes it look like you're filming on a way more expensive gimbal setup, which is pretty sick. So for anything except pod footage, I'm all for the stabilization modes. And even in pod footage, it, it still looks pretty good. It's just not what I want personally. I have so much time for anybody that stops halfway down a river, climbs out onto a wet slippery rock and starts filming their mates. It is so nice to have another angle of the river that is not just pod footage. I truly appreciate anyone that gets these sorts of shots because I know the effort involved to get some of them and I know that it can be really exhausting and it's hard to want to stop when you're just bombing down the river. But I do think that's a secret to getting good shots. It's just to use your GoPro a lot, to put in some time and energy, and to not be afraid to take risks, you know? Like, not every single shot will work out, but it might, and it could look sick, so why not give it a go? I was recently on a shoot with Estons, and I just had my mind blown by how creative he could be with a really simple setup. It's, it, it is honestly, it's extraordinary. I'm gonna link his stuff below. I'm not gonna spoil it here. You just have to check out the shots that this dude is able to capture with his setup. It's incredible. Since that trip with Estons, I've been way more into putting my GoPro on the end of my paddle and using that setup to get shots. I like to put the GoPro mount towards the end of the paddle, but just back a little bit from the edge to try and stop it from hitting rocks and getting rounded off. I also use the paddle mount as a selfie stick. So flipping the GoPro around to face me and using my super slow-mo mode, 2.7K, 240 frames a second. The time where your paddle is out of the water and in position for a good shot is really small. So to be able to slow down these shots and extend those moments, honestly is the only way that these shots would ever look good. In slow motion, with that transition from in the water to out of the water and back in and the speed changes, I honestly think it looks pretty good. I love follow cam shots. I love the process of filming follow cam shots. I find it so fun. So to capture this sort of shot, you're gonna need either the Levitar mount that Jackson Kayak makes, or you're gonna have to make your own homemade version. Pistol Productions made a pretty good one from a frying pan once. When the camera's on your kayak and facing backwards, it's all up to the kayaker chasing you to be on point and as close as possible. But when the camera is facing forwards, then it's all up to you to be as smooth as you can and to be as close to that kayaker in front as you possibly can be. The time where the shot is good can be really small with follow cam shots. So I actually switch between 5K 60 and 4K 120 a lot for these shots but any opportunity to be able to slow down the, the shot and extend the time where it's good is good for follow cam shots. Some of my favorite shots ever were when we had the GoPro on the end of the paddle and we were trying to get as close to a kayaker doing a trick in a rapid as we possibly could. And we crashed and burned and flipped and rolled a lot trying to get these shots, but the ones that we did get are some of my all time favorites. They're hard to get because you have to take your attention off the rapid that you're halfway down Focus on trying to keep your hands steady, that the GoPro's in a good angle and that you're not um, putting off the other kayaker by being too close. But they're so rewarding to capture. I think my all-time favorite one of these shots was when Dano kick-flipped the barreling wave on the Zambezi River. And he went absolutely massive. The shot was nice and close, it was really good. I passed Dano his GoPro back. He looked at the shot and he was stoked and he goes to put it in his pocket for safekeeping and he fumbles it and drops it into the river. Which brings me to the floaty. Now you look like an absolute plonker when you wear this thing, but I like that I can quickly clip it off my head, put it on my paddle, throw it to one of my mates and I'm not stressed about dropping it in the river and losing it forever. So it really eliminates a lot of stress for me when I'm filming around water. If you don't want to use this, I get that 100%. But if you're not going to wear it, I do recommend uh, making a little homemade leash from your GoPro to your helmet strap. Nine times out of ten, you're never going to need the floaty or the leash because the mount's going to stay in place. But that one time out of ten, you're going to flip and hit a rock run and the, the GoPro is just gone forever. So nine times out of ten, you won't need it. That one time out of ten, it's the difference between losing your camera and your footage and not. GoPro make a bunch of accessories to help you capture your shot. You can check them out on their website. The number one thing I would recommend is the Enduro battery. So the new cameras do ship with this, which is really good. 
Um, the biggest thing I find with this, number one, it lasts way longer, especially in cold temperatures. And number two, the camera behaves flawlessly and it has no issues when, when you use an Enduro battery. If you use one of the older blue batteries from previous GoPros, I find the camera has a lot of issues with stopping recording and not interpreting how much battery is left and all sorts of annoying little issues that you don't want to have to deal with. And it makes complete sense to me because the new camera is so much more powerful, it's got that bigger sensor, and so it takes more power to power that power. <laughs> On the cheat sheet, you'll see these settings that I use across all the different film modes. So sharpness is set to low. I personally just prefer how that looks and I'm trying not to have a, a, an image that looks really digitally enhanced. I like to have that shot on low and I still find it looks really crisp. White balance, for most people just leave this on auto, the GoPro does a great job already, but kayaking is such a dynamically lit sport that I like to lock mine off at 5500 because if I don't do that, I find the GoPro goes through quite a range as it's adjusting to the lighting conditions and it's trying to find itself and figure out what to do next. For most people just leave it on auto. EV comp, this is just a quick easy way to change how bright or how dark your shot is. It's very easy on sunny days to have things like the crests of waves and other white features on the river blow out from the sun. So for kayaking, I, have, I always have it stopped down to minus 0.5 to protect those highlights. And if I'm filming in a really sunny location on the water, then I'll actually stop it all the way down to minus 2 or minus 1.5, but it has to be incredibly bright to do that. This is one of those settings where if you get it wrong, you can absolutely ruin your footage. So pay attention to it if you are using it and make, make sure you get it adjusted properly before each session and even during that session if the lighting conditions change. Bitrate I always have set to high, you get a better quality image. Dano showed me this a few GoPros ago and what you can do is you can add a shortcut to your back screen on the GoPro to allow you to quickly and easily change a setting without having to go back into the menu. Hindsight is sort of a cool feature. So in hindsight the GoPro is continuously filming but it will only record and save when you hit that record button. When you hit the record button it will save up to 30 seconds from before you hit the record button. So you can basically never miss a shot which is pretty cool. I use it a lot on rivers where I have a lot of footage already and I, I only want the best stuff. GoPro Quick App, if you're using a GoPro you need the Quick App, you can do absolutely everything in that app from setting up your GoPro to um, downloading footage to editing it to uploading it to Instagram, sick app, you need that if you have a GoPro. The GoPro subscription in my opinion is more than worth it because you get all that cloud storage and for myself, someone that shoots a lot of different rivers with a GoPro, basically that cloud storage allows me to create a catalog of each river. And then when I'm explaining rivers back to people, I can just go on the app, scroll through like eight months of worth of footage, find the river I'm talking about and just show them what's going on exactly there. So for me, that cloud storage option is a really cool feature and I do like having that. As always, there's way more features that I could talk about, but I think these are the main ones for capturing good kayaking footage. And you know, it all comes down to having the right settings on your GoPro, using it a lot, and being creative and taking chances with getting your shots. If you do get a good one, make sure you enter it into the GoPro Awards or the Million Dollar Challenge because you could win a bunch of money for getting a shot with your GoPro, which is pretty sick. And if you do get an especially good one, tag me on Instagram in it because I always want to see sick kayaking shots. And yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. I'm literally about to leave for the airport right now. I'll catch you in the next one.